these results are looking quite good. I don't know. We're not sure. do a lot of work, you know? Yeah. Oh, it's a professor. Oh. Okay. Hello? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I understand. Thank you. Bye. What is it? What does he want? Oh, my God. We've got our work cut out for us this time. We'd better go, then. Let's go. Right, so I'm glad you could all join me here today. As you might be aware, the professor has given us a mission. Okay, so I need your full attention and cooperation on this one. Now, the professor wants us to tackle the major problem of air pollution in London. Air pollution? Yes, air pollution. We've seen it coming, right? We've seen the news, read the headlines. It's about time we started doing something about it. Air pollution is everywhere. Think of the roads and all the vehicles on it. You've got cars, buses, motorcycles, vans, and they're constantly giving out soot from the exhaust fumes. And think about, you know, developers that are constantly knocking down buildings and building them up again. There's loads of dust, and we're walking around breathing it in. That's true, but aren't we used to it by now? Don't we just have to learn to live with it? Actually, I think we're so used to it, we don't even really notice it anymore, but it really does affect our health especially the health of children. I mean, air pollution is affecting the growth of their lungs, it's making them wheeze, and it's affecting adults too. And children with asthma will probably be the worst sufferers. It's going to make their condition worse, it's going to bring about asthma attacks, and even adults with heart problems, they're going to end up in hospital most likely. Would you say that it's toxic? And is it changing the way children's bodies work? Is it bad across all parts of London, or are some areas worse off? Well, it's our job to find out, OK? But how? I've got it. Why don't we do an investigation to find out once and for all whether or not air pollution is affecting the health of children in London? If we get results, with evidence, things could change. You're right. That way we can really see if air pollution is affecting children's lungs. The professor mentioned that he wants children all over London to give up their sputum samples so we can really see the cells inside and if it's changed. That way we can get real solid evidence. But when we need hundreds of volunteers for this study, where will we find them? And how can we be sure that they want to help us? Aren't you sure you're not being a bit over-ambitious? It is ambitious, but it can work. We could even go into schools. And once we're there, we could teach the children why air pollution is affecting their lungs. And that way, they understand why this experiment is so important. I think that's an excellent idea. I think we've come up with a plan. Right, let's get to work. How long have we got? We've got exactly six hours to get to the school, collect as many samples as we possibly can and then return to the lab. Let's go. Okay guys, well, we've got 15 samples, which is fantastic. We just need to start analysing them before the cells die and they're no longer useful. We've only got eight hours, so let's go. samples here from 15 children from this morning. Um, they're not much use to us like this though. Mm. Well, in that case we better start separating the cells from the sample. Okay so let's just take one. Mm -hmm. I'll start by picking out the bits of mucus. And Dr K if you have a look at this you can see these dots here those are the cells that we're looking for. Mm. It's just a matter of getting to them. So I'll add in this liquid uh, that will break down the sticky stuff from the sputum, the lumps. And then we can filter the cells through a mesh to get them out. Now, Jenkin, what we're going to do is we're going to spin this in a centrifuge. That way, all the cells will be at the bottom of the tube. Hmm, there are too many cell types in here. We're going to need our special dye. You're right. We're going to use a surface marker that would tell us which types of cells are in the pellet. Just one drop will do nicely. 
Is the fax machine ready? The fax machine will allow us to make a dot plot or graph of the cells, which then hopefully I can analyse and try to work out whether there's a relationship between the amount of air pollution a child has breathed in and the number of active white blood cells that they have. Hmm. So, you're reading the cells to see if the child's immune system, their internal defence system, which is made up of lots of white blood cells, is getting ready to fight off the air pollution. Exactly. Let's get cracking. Yes? Yeah. No, OK, the sputum analysis is underway. Dr. Nolson and Jenkins have it totally under control. Mm -hmm. We've got a really good haul this morning. Yeah, I think at least seven of them are usable. Yeah, so fingers crossed. Dr. Nolson, she's with Jenkins doing the DNA analysis. OK, bye. Dr. Nolson, what have you got there? I've got some saliva samples here, Jenkins. Uh, now, inside one of these is a saliva from uh, one of our participants, and it contains a child's DNA. Now, the information DNA is completely unique and specific to that child, but today I'm specifically looking uh, for sections of the DNA, DNA known as genes um, in order to see um, if any people are protected um, by their genes against air pollution. So there are some people who don't get unwell from air pollution, and that could be to do with their genes? Yes, we think so. We're going to be finding this out today. And if we find this information out, maybe we could use that in the future to help protect people against toxic fumes. Precisely, Jenkins. So now let's try and get to this DNA. So the first thing we need to do is to heat up the saliva samples to 50 degrees Celsius uh, using this water bath here. Um, and what this will do is it will uh, bring the DNA um, out of the sample. OK? And we'll leave it there for one to two hours. Now what should have happened is the cells should have separated away from uh, the saliva itself. Uh, we will now add a buffer, mix it thoroughly using a vortex. And then put it on ice to remove any impurities for 10 minutes. Now we've done that, we can put the sample in a centrifuge and spin it so that all the impurities go to the bottom. Then we can take out the clean liquid from the top, can add some ethanol, and mix gently. Perfect, I can see some DNA clumps forming. Okay, so now we've got the DNA, we can send this off to another company who will be able to map out the genes for us and they can tell us exactly what this child's DNA codes for. Exactly, so we'll be able to see if any of the children have any genes that can protect them against air pollution. Do you think we found anything yet? It's too early to say, but I suspect we'll have some interesting results. Yes, we're on track. The sputum samples and DNA are being processed and we're getting graphs in place as we speak. While soon we'll know if there are genes in children's DNA that stop them from getting ill. Mm -hmm. Right now we need to see if children are getting more allergies because of air pollution. That's right. OK, I'll get a lab update. Oh, Dr K. Just one moment. I need to record the last uh, data set. It seems as if our last participant seems to have a sensitivity to cat hair. What does that mean? It means their white blood cells have already been activated because they're trying to fight off the cat hair that has come into contact with the body. It means that the child is likely to start sneezing and itching whenever they come into contact with a cat, which isn't great, especially if you have a pet cat. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but why are we talking about cats? 
I thought we were investigating air pollution. Well, we are. We suspect that children who are exposed to higher levels of air pollution than others are more likely to have allergies. Mm. That is, their body will start reacting unnecessarily to things like pollen, uh, dust mites and household mould. Well, that's no good. Having allergies is really horrible. You might get itchy, you might sneeze a lot, you might even get a rash. It's not nice. Well, exactly. But what's worse is the immune system is actually overreactive, which means that it's actually trying to fight off things that it doesn't really need to fight off. And now, this could be down to air pollution, and it's what we're trying to figure out at the moment. So I'm going to use a graph to compare how much air pollution each child's lungs has, and then I'll compare that to their allergies. We should start to get something soon. What do you think you'll find? I think we're going to have interesting results. Mm. <gasps> what about the urine samples? I think you're going to have to go to the freezer to find out. So urine is very important because it can tell us if a person has been exposed to cigarette smoke or pollutants. We can use this information to compare it to our allergy results and any changes we can see in immune cells. So, more air pollution can mean more allergies Okay, and inflammation in the body. Well, unfortunately, we've actually had to freeze the samples for the time being. We just haven't had the time yet to analyse them. Um, it's because of all the information that we've got um, from the study. We've got 18 months um, of worth of work, including 400 urine samples. But luckily, we can freeze these and analyse them at a later date. I hope the professor will understand. Yes? Yes. No, the urine is in storage at the moment. No problem, but we can analyse the data later. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, the air pollution monitors? OK. Roger that. OK, I'm on my way. Oh, fantastic. I'm so glad you're here. We don't have much time left. We've had a lot to cover. OK, we're almost done and we're doing OK. So, we need to have a chat about the air pollution monitors. The professor will be calling in 10 minutes. In that case, we'd better get a move on. As you know, these air pollution monitors are brilliant. They cost around £10,000 each, and it's no surprise why. They can tell us almost exactly how much soot or carbon, which you find in exhaust fumes, someone's been exposed to. So, we selected pupils who gave really good sputum samples because they had the highest number of white blood cells. And they carried the air pollution monitors around with them for 24 hours, including to school and back. OK, so the results are in and they're startling. As you can see, uh, air pollution levels differ across London here on this map. So does that mean if people spend more time in certain areas with high levels of air pollution, then they're more likely to be exposed to those risks? Yes, exactly. So I suppose it's to do with things like local traffic, construction sites and all those other factors. Yes, you're absolutely right. And, but this is exactly what our research is about. If we've got hard evidence, then maybe we can try to do something to change things. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Professor. Hello. Right, guys, first of all, well done for all your hard work. OK, so thanks to all the children who have taken part in our study, we've got 433 great sets of data points okay, across 20 different schools in London. And the results are in. And? Well.